Hey guys, welcome to All Electronics. I'm Gregory, and in this video, we are going to characterize this RF amplifier here. We are going to use this amazing old VNA from HP here to characterize the device, and I'm gonna explain why I chosen this design here that we're gonna use in next videos to design a small scale phase array system. Take your coffee and come with me. So, guys, the main idea of this amplifier here, you can take a look closer here is to use it as the output amplifier for a small scale phased array system using five dipoles. Something like this dipole here or this one with the reflector here in the bottom. Actually, this is called a Yagi Yuda antenna. So this small scale phased array system needs five amplifiers to amplify the signal to the antennas. And before the amplifier, we need a delay line. So I have this ugly prototype here. We're gonna study it in next videos. This delay line is used to control the phase of the signals and it precedes the final amplification to generate a powerful signal to all the antennas. So we're gonna have five delay lines, five amplifiers and five antennas. So one of the main characteristics of the amplifier is to have a very well defined and very low return loss. Why guys? Because the delay line wanna look to a very well defined impedance. This means that the amplifier has a very low return loss or in other other words, a very well and defined fifth ohm resistive impedance. Other characteristic we wish from this amplifier is to have the control of the output power or the control of the gain of the amplifier. So we need to have very well defined return loss or input impedance and a way to control its output power. And guys, always remember you can support the channel becoming a patron link in description to help me with all the projects we design here. So guys, the main idea here is that we have the first amplifier amplification stage here that gonna be excited by the signal from the delay line. The delay line will be connected here. And the output of this stage gonna excite a second power stage that gonna generate sufficient power for transmission with the antenna array here. Why I chosen here two stages of amplification, guys? Because this stage is responsible for input gain, but also to generate a well-defined impedance in its input. And this second stage here needs to generate power, and it also needs to have its gain controlled by an input signal here, the bias of the transistor. If we change the bias, if we change the gain, we change the input impedance. So this first amplifier stage works more like an isolation stage that isolates isolates the input from the amplification and here we have the device that generates the output power. As any design of any kind of delay line we use wish to see a very well defined impedance to work properly, I use the old trick of a series resistance to match the input. So this is an old dirty trick but it works pretty pretty well for this scenario here. The input impedance here gonna be around 20 ohm plus some capacitive part and this series resistor here adds a very well controlled resistive impedance. So the impedance looking through the amplifier is very well defined because this resistance here dominates the input impedance. This is not a problem here because you have plenty of gain and the noise figure, all the noise generated by losing power here in the input through this resistive part does not matter. Any power lost here we can amplify, noise figure doesn't matter here so it's not a problem and it works really really well. We're gonna see on the VNA. The second stage DC bias comes from this port here so we can control the bias of the transistor and we can change the class of operation changing the output power. So a DC voltage in this node here will change the bias, change the class of operation and gonna change the output power. This is why I'm calling this amplifier a polyclass amplifier because you can change the class of operation as I explained on Patreon. We help the preceding L C matching network with this constant impedance here that is here only for AC through this capacitor here and the bias is coupled directly to the base of the transistor. And here in the output we have a LCC network to match the fifth ohm output impedance to a higher impedance in the collector of the transistor. Here here we see the design using the construction technique I learned from Matthias Widmar using a double phase PCB with copper tape on the vias. We have the input side here, the 33 ohm resistance in the input, it goes to the first transistor. The collector is matched to the base of the second transistor and here you have a power transistor with its matching network that goes to the output. Here is the output connect. Bias and power supply is applied through these pins here 
that you can connect with a hook. Well guys, now we're gonna turn on this beast here, this old VNA from HP. It's a 1975 machine, an amazing machine, all analog. This myth chart you're gonna see happens by an analog way, no digital circuits here, really amazing. Let's turn it on. So guys, this machine has four floors and we need to calibrate it before we use. Here we have the S parameter test set where we have two directional bridges. And these four cables here are the connections for the RF, reference A and B signals generated by the signal path inside this device here. This is the main measuring device where we have the signal generators, frequency synthesizers, phase and magnitude detector. This part here is the display unit where we can perform calibration, marker selection, measuring. This unit here also makes Cartesian to polar transformation in an analog way to show here the Smith actually the reflection parameter in polar coordinates and here on top we have the storage and normalize unit. First thing we're gonna do is to configure the device to the frequency range we're gonna use. We have a 433 megahertz amplifier and we're gonna set the device to, to continuous wave plus delta F, this means center frequency plus span and we're gonna place here in the center frequency 433. Man, this displays here with LED is are amazing man amazing amazing look at this we can see all the measuring in simultaneous here amazing so we have 433 in the center frequency and let's put here plus and minus 200 megahertz oh this is the maximum okay this is the maximum let's use 130 now we're gonna configure the first measuring channel to a s11 parameter measurement so we need to measure a over r the signal that comes from the first directional bridge over the reference and first we're gonna calibrate the magnitude so we're gonna use the magnitude tra trace and let's place it here on a very sensitive scale 0.5 db per division i'm gonna connect this short here so we connect it here let's turn off the light here to see better the display and here guys we see that we have the marker i can change the marker position here remember this is all done in analog fashion and we need to calibrate the marker here to have a zero db reading so we go to the marker menu here and we see that for this frequency we are pretty close there okay only 0 0.03 here no problem but let's zero it here pressing and holding zero okay now we zeroed the marker here in this position here magnitude is calibrated now we're gonna calibrate the phase response let's go to a polar plot here a polar phase plot here we have it and now we need to calibrate for the electrical length of this connection here so we're gonna use the electrical length stretcher here to change the electrical length artificially so we can compensate for the physical electrical length of the connection let's change it here for the a okay and let's change here the electrical connection <laughs> look at these guys this is amazing okay you can find adjust here okay I think here is okay. Now we need to zero this measuring here. So let's press zero here. And it's gonna auto adjust to zero. Now the phase is zero, but we need to place it in the correct position. Because remember, we placed a short here. And a short is in this position here. So we need to add here in the reference, we need to add 108 degrees. To place it on the correct side here now we zero the reference and you're gonna see that if i go here to the marker we are measuring exactly negative 108 degrees is this place here that is correct for a short now we are calibrated for the input impedance measurement now we need to calibrate an s21 measurement using the second measurement channel this one here i'm gonna place an attenuator here to protect the equipment from the power of the amplifier now we have the true connection and we can calibrate the S21 parameter measurement. And here for curiosity, you can see that we are exactly on 5th ohm now here because we are measuring exactly 5th ohm from this connection here. Amazing. Let's turn off this measurement here and let's turn on a magnitude measurement here where we are configured to B over R. So is the signal from the second directional bridge over the reference signal we are measuring magnitude let's go to a sensitive scale here is okay 
you can see we are already reading the attenuation of the attenuator 10 dB and this is amazing guys because this is before calibration and why guys because this machine here it is almost perfect from the perspective of the hardware we don't have any digital calibration so all the hardware here the RF needs to be perfect and you can see here without calibration we are measuring exactly the attenuator because this machine has an amazing hardware amazing directional couplers here inside that are flat for all the measuring range of the device this is the beauty of these old devices here the signal path needs to be perfect from the hardware okay guys let's zero it here pressing zero it's gonna zero it to the reference line and we can also calibrate the phase so let's go to a phase measurement now a cartesian phase measurement we see the phase wrap around here and we can control the phase here guys to be flat okay so now we have a flat phase, which means that we are compensating for the electrical length of all the connection and the attenuator. Okay guys, now we can remove this connection here and place the amplifier. Let's go. The device is connected, we have power supply and bias, and let's see the response on the VNA. Let's first take a look on the input impedance, and we see that we have a pretty well defined input impedance here. We see that at the marker frequency here, we are measuring negative 18 dB of return loss, amazing return loss for this amplifier. The delay line will be very happy. And guys, the marker is actually a frequency counter, so actually the sweep is being paused and the frequency is being measure at the marker position so you can see here the frequency of the marker i'm here using marker one and when the sweep is paused the crt pulses over the marker position to show the marker symbol so the marker symbol there is actually the trace being paused and the signal pulsed around and the trace continues you can see it if i turn off the storage beautiful guys beautiful okay let's turn on the normalizer okay we have pretty well defined the return loss and here we are measuring the return loss the same value that appears here on the crt and we can also measure the phase of the reflection changing the measurement for phase here we are measuring the phase of the position of the marker so we have the magnitude and the phase and we can compute the input impedance of the amplifier. If I change the marker position, I change the marker here, and I change the measurement of the marker here on the marker measurement. Really amazing. We can also turn on the S21 parameter measurement we configure on the channel two. So we're gonna see the gain of the amplifier at the same time here on the CRT. Let's do this. Let's go to magnitude look at these guys and now i'm gonna apply a bias to the second transistor the second transistor now is turned off so we can see you have attenuation okay we don't have gain but now i'm gonna apply biasing to the second transistor and i'm gonna need to change the scale here again so now we can measure 21 db of gain we can change the marker position here and we also see that when I change the bias, the input impedance here also changed a bit. So we actually changed a little the input impedance of the amplifier when we changed the bias of the second transistor. So the isolation of the first stage is not so good, guys. Probably a common base stage would be helpful as an isolator. Remember, we are using a common emitter. Let's see the gain changing when I change the biasing. You can see that... The that you can control the gain of the device. We can control the gain of the device and we have an almost constant input impedance profile. This device here, guys, is so amazing that we can change the marker. We can have more than one marker. So look at this. If I place a second marker, look at this. I can place a marker here, marker one here and marker two here marker 2 and marker 1 and i can switch here which marker we are measuring so i can measure marker 1 this position here or i can measure marker 2 this position here and it changes the measurement here on the display amazing amazing and we can also use the second channel to measure phase of the first measurement so uh, let's see here magnitude in polar and phase of the AR also. We now are measuring magnitude and phase 
of S11. And we are not losing the calibration. We can return to the first measurement calibrated here. And it shows here relative, that means it is calibrated. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up and remind yourself you can support the channel becoming a patron. Link in the description. I see you in the next video of All Electronics.